how you practice is just as important as what you practice. I'm joined by Ian Highfield, co-founder of Game Light Training. Ian, thanks for being here on School of Golf. And I want to talk about how you've made your career actually out of talking about how people should practice, not what they should do in the swing, but how they should practice. And in particular, talk about tempo and tension, which are two very important parts. So tell us how you got to this place, first of all. Yeah, I was, um, I was playing golf and I'd, I'd played multiple sports uh, and I started to get very interested in the workings of the mind and I started to read. And as I looked around me, I could see a lot of golf instruction was based on what you need to change in your swing and why you would need to change this. But there wasn't really that much information on how you can make this change. So I felt like a lot of golfers, myself included, were putting a lot of time in on the range and the swing changes just weren't sticking. Um, so I was very fortunate. I spent time with great coaches, um, professors, looked at other sports, uh, and I developed a framework that um, I now believe helps players make swing changes stick. Well, you've done a great job, no doubt. Now, let's give the viewers who are watching this something that will stick with them. Let's give, <laughs> give, give me, give, give this professor, <laughs> this professor, give this professor something for tempo. What could I practice yeah. to improve my tempo? What would you thought was be on tempo? And then we'll move to tension. Yeah, I think for tempo, um, real, real basic one is counting. Okay. Now, that's quite an old drill, um, and people will count in their mind but actually counting out loud is probably a more effective way of doing it. Um, so what I would say is when you address the ball or just before you address the ball, you start your count, like one, two, three, four, five, and you count all the way through what the would, swing. What would you think? Do you think six is a good count? You know, it's completely dependent on the individual. Completely dependent on the individual. I would say whatever you do, if you enjoy it and you're engaged in it, that's good for you. That would be a good count. So let's well, let, find out. Let's have a go at that. I'm going to go with the six count because I think that would be pretty good for me. OK, so we could have the hitting light in. And I, I've never done this before, so I have no idea what could happen. <laughs> I, I hope you're safe here. I hope you're safe there, mate. OK, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. And that was just intuitive to me, one, two, three, four, five, and it wasn't too bad, actually. Now, would you ever recommend that somebody access that when they're actually playing? Because I must say, on that occasion, uh, I got the club back without even thinking about what yeah. I was doing and hit more, more than an adequate shot there. As humans, we're negatively wired, so we're designed to figure out, like, where's the danger? Am I going to miss this shot? Don't worry about this. When I cross the road, I have to look both ways. That brain is very active when we're playing golf. So just by simply counting, you can calm that negative voice that's in your mind that's kept you alive all these years. You can calm it down and you can hit nice, good golf shots because you're just accessing your more fluid, repeatable swings rather than trying to avoid danger and force the club into different positions. Just going to do that again. I'd, I'd have to say that felt maybe just a tiny bit rushed. I'm going to see if I can just make it... Uh, I'll see where I go. I'm just going to count and see where I go to. So we could have the hitting light on again. I think six might suit me better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now that actually felt better. So, you know, perhaps you have to work through. That was a better shot, actually. Perhaps you have to work through. So I could see for me that would be a seven count. Yeah. And I've never done that before, but it's so interesting because it's almost like the swing starts, the dance starts before you get to the oh, golf ball. Great point. And so I pay you a compliment, something that you did exceptionally well was when you started your downswing, what I see in a lot of players, and this is why I get them to do it aloud, they go, six, and the count completely changes. Yeah. And that shows how that the it? tempo and tension yeah, is how, getting out how, of sync. How much effort they put in. Yeah. Well, so that's, that's, that's the tempo part of it. And tempo is important to make the golf swing repeat, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I don't think good tempo will make up for a bad swing, but it does help what you've got repeat. Uh, let's talk about tension. I mean, tension is usually a, a grip pressure, an arm pressure, a body, yeah. body pressure thing, upper body thing so often. What would be, what would be your thoughts on something? Uh, I mean, I, look, I've been, I've been around Jack Nicholas quite a lot, and Jack has always talked about keeping the grip pressure constant constant throughout the whole swing. Mm -hmm. Whether that's absolutely true, we don't know for sure, but the thought certainly is a good one. But your thoughts on tension, muscular tension? Yeah, I think a lot of golfers spend so much time 
trying to perfect the movements in their swing. And then when they get under stress, because they get tight, they can't access those movements. So controlling tension really helps you access your best swing for that moment. Um, and I like to look at it in the hands, but I also like to look at it in the jaw as well. Mm. Um, I think the jaw plays a big role. Um, we can see Lee Westwood when he hits, he's like this with his tongue out, controlling his jaw tension, and he's one of the best Do iron players. Do you think that's intentional on Lee's part? It, he could have been coached it. It could be subconscious. I, I don't know. Um, but what I, I do know is controlling jaw tension and even just placing your mind and focusing there, having that relaxed jaw, relaxed hands can help you access your best golf swing, especially under, under stress and pressure. Well, I'm going to try that. I hope I don't bite my tongue off. <laughs> so what I would say, Martin, before you do it, is if you tense, bite your jaw down and then release, tense and release, and then you will have a really good feeling in there. And then never, never, never done this. This is the first for me. So I'm going to tense everything up. Yeah. <laughs> and then relax. And then my thought is to keep my jaw relaxed. Now, would just you recommend keeping the jaw open just a little bit? I, again, I'm going to empower you. You can give me feedback, and then we could maybe evolve it depending on the result and, and, your, and how you feel. I'm going to keep my jaw open to start with. I've done this with the potato chip in my, uh, in my mouth before. I'm going to keep my jaw open, and my focus is to keep the jaw relaxed. You know, it, it's so interesting where you place your mind in golf. I mean, I think we've, we've got the golf swing we have, and then sometimes your intent can completely ruin it. And sometimes if you can have a thought such as keep the jaw relaxed or the early account, you can, you can access it so much better there, which I've done there. So this time I'm going to, I'm going to grab the tip of my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> but don't bite the tongue off. Oh, <laughs> I think it's highly unlikely you would tighten up if you were just, just yep. nibbling on the edge of your tongue. Uh, Ian Highfield, that has been an absolute treat to be with you. Um, uh, you've got a book out. Yes. Title is? Golf Practice, How to Practice Golf and Take Your Range Game to the Course. Yeah, I've read it. It's a fascinating book and uh, you really do yourself a favour if you're improving your golf as your desire then then uh, definitely get to it. Hope this helps improve your practice. For more great tips, subscribe to Golf Channel on YouTube and make sure to watch School of Golf. Ian, thank you so very much. Thank you, much. Martin. Appreciate it.